not a single step back. Yes, you heard it right. This is not the order from Joseph Stalin to Soviet soldiers back during the Second World War. This is the order that the freshest, youngest Russian conscripts are receiving right before being sent into Ukraine. With the only one major difference is that during the Second World War the Soviet soldiers were protecting their own homeland and now Russians are the invaders. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And yes, as always, let's begin with some ridiculous Russian propaganda. So, in this very first video we have a Russian guy who is calling himself a fortune teller. And he basically says that during one of his dreams another fortune teller came into his dream. And she said that no matter what, no matter how hard it will be, Russia will win in this uh, war. And I mean, so the Russian army cannot provide any victories to Russian propaganda, so they can talk about them 24-7 on federal channels to pretty much brainwash the sea patriots. So I guess this is the new state of Russian propaganda, which became recently. But okay, <laughs> back to a little bit more serious news. And so yesterday the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, has arrived to Poland to meet his pretty much colleague, the president of Poland, Andrzej Duda. The biggest topic of this conversation was obviously the situation in Ukraine and how Poland and Ukraine can cooperate even better for the mutual benefit for both countries. And so, as one of the results of this meeting, the president of Poland, Andrzej Duda, has promised four more fighter jets MiG-29 to Ukraine, in addition to four which are already allegedly arriving to Ukraine, and then in the future Poland will try to look for six more planes. In addition to that, the presidents agreed to send to Ukraine three companies of self-propelled mortars called RAK, some armored personnel carriers called Rasamak, and other ammunition or any vehicles that Ukraine might seem worthy. Poland and Ukraine have also signed a memorandum about the future manufacture of the ammunition and in his closing remarks the president of Poland mentioned that his country will always be supporting Ukraine until the victorious end and other western countries should follow this example. And Zelensky, on the other hand, he thanked the government of Poland and its people for its continuous support. And also, whenever talking about the defense of Bakhmut, he mentioned that Ukrainians will be protecting it for as long as needed. But in case there is a risk of them being surrounded, the appropriate decisions will be made. And just hold on a little bit longer, because we will talk about the situation in the east of Ukraine in more details very soon. And so yes, recently Russia also had experience with some other countries showing the support to this cause. And what I mean by that is that the ambassador of China to the European Union, Fu Xin, he mentioned that China <laughs> does not recognize Crimea and other annexed territories as a part of Russia. And all these statements after the visit of Xi Jinping to Russia that Russia and China are two friendly countries that's gonna support each other, this was just the rhetorical statements. It does not necessarily mean <laughs> that they are true. Well, there goes another 100% friend that Putin thought he had behind his back. But at least, according to him, Russia can always count on North Korea, Zimbabwe and Honduras. So pretty much yes. <laughs> Go ahead and place your bets which country you think will be the next one to turn Putin down. <laughs> and if you want to see if you are right or wrong and you don't want to miss this in one of my future videos, can you please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also check my second channel the Russian Dude Clips where I post under one minute summaries every single day. The link will be down below. But okay, just a couple more words about the continuous western support to Ukraine and the complete <laughs> failure of the Russian air defense and the border patrol and then I'll give you some interesting facts from the south and east of Ukraine. 
And first of all, as you can see from this video, the air defense missile complex provided by NATO called Avenger is already on combat duty of Ukrainian forces. The entire video is in two parts and it's approximately 4 minutes long, so I uploaded the full version to my Patreon, the link will be down below. And speaking about the air defense, recently above Leningrad nuclear power station, located very close to the second biggest city in Russia, St. Petersburg, there has been another unidentified object, which Russians completely fail to intercept. <laughs> to be honest, they don't even know what was it. But probably even more famous this uh, recent event, which proved the complete inefficiency of Russian border patrol and just once again the air defense systems, was this Ukrainian who crossed uh, the border in his single engine plane. And at least, yes, he was detained later by Russians, <laughs> but he was able to fly above Russia non-stop. And the only reason why he got captured, according to him, it is because there was some kind of malfunction with his plane, so he had to do an emergency landing in Bryansk region. And this is where he got intercepted by Russians. During the search it was even discovered that he was carrying a rifle and an armored vest. And whenever he was asked what he was doing, he he said that I was just to follow another plane. Yes, there were two planes. The first one looks like it completely evaporated without a trace. But long story short, his responsibility was to follow this plane at approximately 50 meters altitude and to take pictures. So yes, the next time the Russian propaganda is gonna make fun of Ukrainian air defense systems, just remember about this case. All right, all right, all right. And now, as promised, let's talk about the situation in the east and the south of Ukraine. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continued and even intensified their defense preparations in the anticipation of an upcoming Ukraine's counteroffensive in the near future. And yes, this includes Crimea. We even have this most recent request by the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine addressed to those people, Ukrainians, living in Crimea to report, record and basically inform Ukrainian authorities on anything military related that happens on the peninsula. And this includes the location of the military bases, the military equipment, vehicles, soldiers and their numbers and also their movements. And so right here in this video looks like that one of the residents already started to follow the advice of the defense intelligence of Ukraine and recorded this very interesting video. And whatever is basically happening is that the Russian soldiers are practicing to do the combat activities within a city. This video has been recorded deep in the western coast of Crimea and basically it allows us to assume that Russians are preparing for the offensive of Ukrainians and combat activities on the peninsula itself. Talk about no panic, right? Next we go to Kherson region, specifically to Kardashenka, and according to Ukrainian sources, they were able to destroy a small Russian military base located in this city. Then we have a very interesting statement from the Russian infiltrator in Zaporozhye region, Vladimir Rogov. And by the way, Vladimir again. <laughs> they do like this name, right? Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Saldo, Vladimir Solovyov, Vladimir Rogov, but doesn't matter. Long story short, his statement claims is that according to his intelligence, Ukrainians they finalized their preparations for an upcoming counteroffensive against the Parozhye region, which to be honest, as of right now, is one of the most probable directions for an upcoming Ukrainian attack. Next to go to the east of Ukraine, and let's take a look at this map which shows us the changes in territorial control. And as you can see right here, in the last 24 hours, Russians were able to advance just a little bit closer to Novoselivsky. Then we have once again the report by the Institute for the Study of War that Russians continue their offensive along Svatove Kremlin Road and, as always you guessed it, no results at all. Moving deeper into the eastern front lines, Ukrainians reported that they were able to intercept a Russian K-52 helicopter. And as we get closer to Bakhmut, Ukrainian forces along with the artillery were able to repel a pretty big assault attempt of Russians next to Orikhova-Vasilivka. 
Next we go a little bit to the south of Bakhmut, where Ukrainian artillery was able to destroy a small Russian military base located in Kurdumivka. And speaking about Bakhmut itself, this is how the front line inside this city has been changing in the last 24 hours. And as you can see, Russians got extremely close to the city center. But as for now, Bakhmut still stands and Ukrainians are not planning to leave it. Just literally a couple last words from the east of Ukraine and then we can talk about this most recent devastating order that the Russian conscripts received recently. And so yes, as we go down to the east of Ukraine, Ukrainians were able to destroy a Russian stronghold and a planning center located in Nova Bakhmutivka. And according to the intelligence data they were able to retrieve from this place, this was the planning center which Russians used in order to plan their offensive along Avdiivka. Here is yet once again another video of a first-person view drone controlled by Ukrainians, which is used to destroy Russian military equipment located on top of this cell tower. And if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more, I was able to find a couple of more drone footages in addition to another uncensored material and I uploaded all of it to my Patreon, the link will be down below. And so yes, now let's talk about this horrible order that the Russian conscripts received a couple of days ago. And as you might already know it, the spring conscription cycle in Russia has already started and Putin already even signed an order to recruit 147,000 people with the ultimate goal to mobilize approximately 400,000. And pretty much yes, as you can imagine, the majority of them will be sent into Ukraine. In addition to that, according to the Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shaigu, the potential conscripts are being notified electronically about their summons to the military offices, which makes it almost impossible or at least extremely complicated to dodge the draft. And recently, the Russian government passed the bill which allows not just the Russian professional soldiers to become peacekeepers. But also this time even the conscripts can become these so-called peacekeepers, which potentially in theory allows them to indefinitely increase the pool of the Russian soldiers to select from, to recruit and obviously later on send into Ukraine. But truly the worst part about it is that these most recent Russian conscripts, pretty much fresh soldiers who are only going through their trainings, they started receiving these orders, which are called not a single step back. They have also been receiving these memos, which pretty much justify the war in Ukraine. And pretty much it is a perfect analogy between the current situation and the Second World War. And by the way, a pretty interesting part about this memo is that the alleged territory of Russia does not have their, like they call it, Russian Crimea. Pretty interesting, right? In just a couple of words what this memo says is that it is the western countries, especially the US, which wants to destabilize the situation inside Russia and they're doing everything possible to achieve this using the hands of Ukrainian soldiers. And the ultimate goal of the West, according to this propagandistic brochure, is to completely create anarchy and pretty much overthrow the government within Russia. And obviously they achieve it using the neo-Nazis in Ukraine. But don't worry, this memo says, you are a glorious Russian soldier, you are the protector of peace, pretty much the peacemaker. It will be your responsibility to save your motherland and the entire world from these bad people in the West. Let's just call them like this, okay? And I mean, yes, whenever the Russian authorities and the Russian army, they constantly do this hidden mobilization, they conscript more people than they acknowledge they did, and now they produce this not a single step back order to fresh young men who only been serving at the military for less than a couple of months. I mean, it's not a wonder that the main building of the Ministry of Defense of Russia in Moscow spontaneously caught on on fire. But obviously the Russian authorities denied everything, saying that this was just a neighborhood building which was on fire. We are good, do not worry. 
And so, yes, the Western military support is slowly but surely arriving into Ukraine. They already employ some of this equipment on the front lines. And Russia, it feels like just trying to do its final nonsense activities, just trying to delay the inevitable. But in the end, the good always beats evil, and it will be Ukrainians who will prevail in defending their own country. And if you don't want to miss any of these events as soon as they start happening, just please consider subscribing to my channel. It only takes one click. You can also become my channel member and unlock exclusive channel badges. You can also become my Patreon, there is still one week of free access, or you can use the PayPal link, all of them will be found down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarji, and see you tomorrow.